This is where we will ask you to like and share our videos and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with what we have to offer. See you there. Previously on Captain's Saver Home and the Captain's Shorts. Yes, ma'am. The previous crew decided to abort the mission. What? All drywall was incorrectly secured. That needs to be flush, or at least secured, and it's neither. We also found an issue with the pillar. And if you really want to get down to some serious business. And now, back to our regularly scheduled programming. We should just consider this video pint-sized. It is time to prepare the walls and ceiling for paint. After the initial sanding, use a drywall knife to scrape any excess joint compound from edges, window openings, inside corners, and corner bead. Fill any divots, low areas, gouges, and cracks on wall surfaces, inside corners and along the corner bead locations, with taping and topping compound and let dry. Chances are you won't need to be using your mesh sander at this point. More than likely what is left over is going to be just little hairs here and there from your touch-ups, and that could be taken care of with your sanding sponge. And the sanding sponge is going to work better anyway for your inside corners and your corner bead. It may be possible to proceed simply with a wet sponge, wiping any uneven areas down without the need for sanding. This will also remove any residual dust that may be on the walls and ceiling, which will complete the next step as well. With areas such as inside corners and window openings, it may be easier to remove any residual dust using a vacuum with a hose attachment before using the wet sponge along the remainder of their surfaces. After eliminating as much of the sanding dust as possible, the next step is to apply caulking on the inside corners. This will give a cleaner and smoother transition between the two surfaces, as well as a more professional look in the finished product. We are using PVA drywall primer which is ideal for use on porous surfaces such as bare drywall, joint compound, and topping compound. This type of primer allows for better adhesion of most paints applied to those surfaces. When applying the primer, start with a brush near inside corners, light switches, outlets, doors and cabinets. Follow up with a roller to cover the larger sections of walls and ceilings, and to smooth out brush strokes where possible. If using an airless spray gun, adding a little bit of water to thin out the paint is going to be beneficial in allowing the flow of paint through the sprayer and through the spray tip. And depending on what type of material you're going to be using, it's going to be important to choose the right tip for that application. But regardless of the material that you're going to be using, the technique is still the same. The tip itself should be no more than about 12 to 14 inches from the surface. Each pass should be smooth and consistent in speed and should overlap the previous pass. The spray tip should also be as close to 90 degrees as possible to the surface that is being painted to give a nice, smooth, clean looking coat. Most people will not have access to a paint sprayer. Due to this, the most likely form of painting will be brushing and rolling. Starting with a brush to apply the paint along inside corners, switches and outlets, and surfaces not being painted. And unless your brushing skills are excellent, masking off the areas where paint is not desired would be advised. We don't need no stinking masking. That's just how we roll. We like to deal with the corner bead, the inside corners, and the window openings before moving on to the larger surfaces. Add paint to the roller and remove any excess material by rolling back and forth against the surface of the tray or metal bucket grid before applying to the walls. Use a W pattern while applying, overlapping each pass, for the best results. And be sure to keep the roller wet with paint. If the roller is drier than the wall, it will remove the paint instead of applying it. When applying paint to flat surfaces, it's usually suggested that you use either a sponge roller or a roller with no more than a 3 8 inch nap 
However, we've realized that that's usually not enough to get a sufficient amount of coverage. So we end up using at least a half inch nap when we roll. Usually a half inch nap is more prone to fill in textured walls, but we like to use them to give a little bit better coverage for one. And for two, the half inch nap does give a bit of a subtle texture to the wall. So it gives the wall a little bit more dimension than just plain wall. So are we going to end up doing anything fun and exciting or are we just going to stand around to watch paint dry?